You've likely heard the term Gary Stu before. If you haven't, you've surely heard of its female counterpart, the Mary Sue. A Mary Sue is a character who is perfect. Nothing they do is ever wrong. If they were to do something wrong or have a flaw, it would not come into play in the narrative. Whenever something bad happens to them, there is an immediate solution and every character runs to comfort them. Mary Sue is a term commonly used in the fandom sphere to use against the OCs of nine-year-olds. However, not only nine-year-olds can make Mary Sues. Sometimes grown-up writers can do so as well, as shown by Ray Palpatine from Star Wars. One character who has been accused of being Gary Stu in the Wings of Fire book series is Keebly. Keebly is a Sam Wing who is the last protagonist of the second arc. He's charismatic, but he's very manipulative and ambitious. He has some flaws, but that doesn't mean he isn't a Gary Stu. Let's discuss the case for and against him being or not being a perfect character in a bad way. Before we get started, if you are new to this channel, please think about subscribing. I regularly post both Wings of Fire and Warrior Cats content so you'll never be bored. And to my current subscribers, thank you so much for supporting me, I wouldn't have gotten here without y'all. Let's start out with Keebly's strengths. Keebly is very observant. He's constantly thinking about other dragons and assessing them. He tries to figure out how to please them or how to kill them if that needs to happen. Winter even comments on it, calling it creepy. His observations come from hypervigilance learned in the Scorpion Den, in the Scorpion Den where he grew up, any wrong move could lead to one's downfall. His powers of observation makes it no surprise that he's considered one of the smartest dragons in the series. It is constantly being told to us in a text, and unlike with Blister, there's actually some things to back it up. Keebly is not all smarts though, he's also a decent fighter. When Winter got mad at him over his refusal to talk to Darkstalker about the Icewing spell, he managed to hold his own. He did get knocked out, but it wasn't in the first seconds of the fight. Though he is empathetic, Winter is still a trained killer since birth like all the other Royal Icewings. He was also under the control of a Darkstalker, which would have made it easier for him to hurt his friend than normal. Keebly managed to survive against him, so one has to give him at least a little bit of credit. He's also very noble. He's a noble thief on Tear with Robin Hood. He constantly thinks about stealing from other dragons just to give it to others, instead of taking for himself like other dragons maybe would do. Now let's discuss some of the reasons why Keebly might not be a Mary Sue, mainly his flaws. Keebly is a rather impulsive dragon. Sometimes he cannot plan for the future and instead goes from point A to point B without planning what's between it. This can be seen with both times he used the weather bracelets. The first time he created a giant sandstorm outside the stronghold. The second time, he fulfilled the thunder from Jade Mountain will th fall beneath thunder and ice. Keebly is also a deeply insecure dragon. He spends half of his book commenting on how Winter is so much better than him in every regard. He was fully trusting a Cobra when she came back into his life because he still felt insecure over the lack of attention that he was given as a child from her. Lee has a very dubious ethical stance sometimes as well. He was the one who came up with Dark Soccer spell to charm everyone into liking him. At least according to Darkstalker, he did have a spell similar to that before he was imprisoned. When he learned Darkstalker created a spell to make Winter more manageable, he did not say that was terrible. Instead, he said that he would have done the same, as Winter could be a bit hard to manage. He also found no issue in the charming spell. He believed that the basic idea of it was right, and found no issue in compelling other dragons to like him. This might be because he feels as though no other dragon likes him naturally, or because he feels like his insecurities would be healed if it was ensured that other dragons liked him. It was a serious question over whether Keebly would join Dark Soccer's side or not when he was promised Animus Magic. In the beginning of the arc, he absolutely would have. He felt like he had no power at all and was insecure over how other dragons treated him. However, he ended up not doing it because of his character arc, and the fact that he was smart enough to realize that Dark Soccer would not allow him true freedom with Animus Magic. As mentioned in his strengths, Keebly steals a bit. When he's around a lot of jewelry, he's constantly thinking about stealing it. However, at least this stealing is for a noble cause. He doesn't want to steal jewelry to wear for himself, but instead to sell to raise money for orphanages and other such organizations. Moving on, one of the ways that you can tell a Mary Sue is a Mary Sue is if the characters around them constantly praise them and they are rarely insulted. When Moon first meets Keebly, she gravitates towards him. She instantly considers him very smart and charming, but that is likely because she can see into his head. 
Darkstalker behaves the same way around him, but he also peered into Keebly's head. Non-mind readers also tend to compliment Keebly a lot. Umber had a sort of faced crush on Keebly right after meeting him, as did Kinkaju. Winter admitted he was smart even though he disliked Keebly a lot, and Turtle said that Keebly was smarter than him on numerous occasions. Even his enemies called him smart. So Keebly definitely gets a lot of praise from other dragons. The strongest way that you can tell characters are Mary or Gary Sue, in my opinion, is definitely not how other characters treat them, but by how the narrative treats them. If a character rarely has consequences for their actions, then they are Mary or Gary Sue, and if the narrative treats them differently than other characters, then they are likely a Mary or Gary Sue. One consequence that Keebly had was that he had to clean up after the sandstorm. One can say that while he cleaned it up, it was not consequences for his actions. He was not being forced to clean up the sandstorm, and Thorne even urged him not to help. He chose to do so himself. While this makes him a good dragon, I have to agree that it removes some of the narrative consequences that him being forced to help would have had. Him choosing to do it on his own, even when others tell him not to, is sort of a look at how good he is sort of move. The biggest Keebly doesn't have consequences and is treated like a god by the narrative scene has to be the vase scene, where you can clearly compare Keebly's treatment to Winter's. In it, Keebly says that if he had a chance to, he would enchant Winter to like him. Please note that this scene occurred just after Winter had learned that he was enchanted like Darkstalker, who had been secretly plotting and carrying out the genocide of his tribe. Probably not the best thing to say. Keebly realizes that a second later, however, he still thinks that Darkstalker's spell might not be that bad. He has no consequences in the narrative for this besides Winter being a bit mad at him. And let's compare Keebly's treatment to Winter's. Winter accidentally smashed a vase and yelled at Moon for her poor friendship choices. However, he is treated like a rabid dog after that. Keebly says he is scared of Winter and thinks that he will yell at Moon later, which I mean she deserved it. During the battle, Keebly said that Winter might kill Moon in the heat of the battle. Winter has never been a violent dragon, and Keebly's judgment of Winter evidently changed based off of an accident. Keebly's treatment of Winter is not condemned in the narrative, and is further repeated by others. Kinkaju tells Winter that Moon might not want to be friends with him because he yelled at Moon over her being best friends with a genocider, and is portrayed as being in the right. Winter even is made to feel like everything is his own fault, and that it was his fault that he was kicked out of the friend group. Winter is kicked like a puppy in the narrative for being mad at something that he had a right to be mad about. However, when Keebly gets irrational and does things like the sandstorm, he is treated with the utmost care, and is told that nothing is his fault by the other characters. Woo, that got a bit tense, and I feel like near the end, I was relying more on my feelings and facts there. So I found a chart online for determining whether a character is a Mary Sue, and it should be a bit more objective. Let's see how Keebly lines up. Overpowered. Keebly has no powers. However, he makes up for it with his extreme intellect. Unexplained power level. No, Keebly has no powers, and his powers of observation can be explained as hypervigilance due to a traumatic upbringing. Perfectly good. Keebly thinks about stealing a decent amount, even if the stealing would be justified. Him secretly thinking that mind controlling Winter would be okay is not. No personality. Keebly is full of personality and snark. Instantly liked. This is one that I have to say is true. When Moon first met him, she found him charming and instantly gravitated towards him. Other dragons are like this as well. Feels like wish fulfillment. This is honestly incredibly subjective, but I'm going to say yes, because mafia raised genius who gets a girlfriend and defeats the demon can sounds like the plot to your average webtoon. Never embarrassed slash fails. Keebly fails a few times. He fails both times he tries to use the weather control bracelets. Keebly scores a 2 out of 7 on the standard Mary Sue chart. That is less than half. Then, according to the chart, he is not a Mary Sue. But let's not just rely on the chart to make the final distinction. Let's go over everything that I discussed from his flaws to his strengths to the way the narrative and other characters treat him to yes, the chart. So is Keebly a Gary Stew? 
I feel like though Keebly does have some character flaws, the narrative treats him with kitty gloves sometimes. He isn't given as firm consequences as other characters, mainly Winter. Other dragons also constantly talk about how smart and intelligent Keebly is, which makes it feel as though the narrative is kissing his tail even more and that he can do nothing wrong in the narrative's eyes. But calling him a Gary Stew would be a bit too much. He still has faults and he still has some consequences. My opinion is that Keebly is half Gary Stu. He isn't there fully, but one can tell that he is one of the author's favorite characters and it hurts her to hurt him. What do you think about Keebly though? Is he a Mary Sue? Comment down below. If you liked this video, feel free to subscribe. I make Wings of Fire and Warrior Cat videos pretty often and your support mean a lot to me. And to those who've already subscribed, thank you for your continued support. I wouldn't have gotten here without y'all. Peace, Rogan out.